Okay, mm-hmm. well, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started at this point. I want to welcome everybody to the third in our series of the Maximum Performance mm-hmm. Webinar Series, weekly series we started um, back in the beginning of October to create some value and give more information and resources and tools to folks in the industry and help you guys get to the next level faster. Uh, just part of our commitment over the years to help you get the information you need to grow the business. And it's my pleasure to welcome to the program today Ms. Stephanie York, who's been one of our top coaches uh, since the very beginning days of Maximum Acceleration in 2005. She's been with us. She's coached well over 2,500 loan officers. Uh, her performance ratings from clients are incredible, and uh, I think she's got quite a, a track record and tenure, and she's got some great information to share with you today that I, I know is going to be valuable and useful to you. So with that, uh, Stephanie, I'm going to turn it over to you and kind of let you take it and run with it today, okay? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I'm, I'm excited to be here. You know, as always, uh, Eric, I'm, I love to share my information with people, and uh, uh, thank you for the great introduction. So I don't want to bore anybody with more of my bio, but uh, I'll probably fill you in on some more stuff as to why I think assessments are so important um, in my coaching experience, and actually all the way back in 2003 when I started working with Tim Brahim at Loan Toolbox, um, DISC was a huge part of our organization. We always wanted to find out if we had the right people working in the right jobs, and we wanted to learn about ourselves a lot. So I fell in love with DISC back then, and through um, getting my master's, I'm taking more assessment tests. Um, my master's is in organizational leadership, so I'm learning how to use assessments for leadership roles, and I'm, I'm loving it. So today's whole thing is about how can you use assessments not only for yourself but for your team and to learn how to better communicate. So I want you to take a ton of notes, think about your team or your own personal development, and ask questions at the end on how these should apply and what might be the best assessments for you to use. So. That being said, let's just jump right in. Um, why would you use assessments? Um, in sales, it's critical to understand your buyer. Companies spend millions of dollars to better understand their target audience, and you should be trying to understand everyone you come in contact to help with the flow of communication. I think that book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, was a book that was basically all about communication. And this will enable you to learn how you can communicate and react. Somebody's moving around a lot over there on the phone. Can everybody mute their phones for me? It sounds like somebody's on a treadmill or something. <laughs> um, through assessment results, you can also learn how to communicate and react and help you understand. to work better with less staff and with less time. So with that being said, um, the assessments that I want to cover today, some of you guys know, and some are maybe going to be new to you. And I'm going to hopefully help you understand what they are and which ones will work best for your personality style as you understand it now. We've got the Kiersey Personality Sorter. This is a typical psychological assessment tool, and it helps um, people better understand, I think, where they are in relationship to the entire population in general. And we're going to go into what that test is and how to better utilize it. Most people who work in a professional environment understand Myers-Briggs type indicator, and I'm going to refer to it now as the MBTI. That's also 16 personality types. We also have strengths finders, which I think a lot of you have possibly heard of, bought the book, or taking the test. It was a really big foundational business book about two years ago. They now have Strength Finders 2.0 out. It was a book put together from the Gallup organization that followed a lot of professionals over, I can't remember, 40 years now, and has found 36 standard strengths that people have. And um, then my favorite is the DISC. And it's probably because of my personality because I'm a little bit more of a, hey, let's get right down to business. But the DISC profile is a very simple tool for you to use in profiling people as you meet them and understanding how to communicate with them right away. So let's dive in. First, we're going to do the Kiersey Personality Sorter. 
And what the fundamental belief is for this particular test, people are born fundamentally different from each other, and they have four types. Um, it's based on the Jung principle that is also used for the Myers-Briggs test, so there's a lot of similarities between them. The, instead of 16 types, Kiersey looks at four temperaments, artisans, guardians, idealists, and rationales. The focus in using these types is to help realize how they affect everything we do from our interests to our work and our lives. And for those of you on this call who want to know a lot more about yourself and how you interact with your life, this is a very in-depth um, assessment test for you to take. And there's also some very in-depth information out there. Um, I will tell you, I tested and I found out I'm an artisan. And it takes into consideration I'm somewhat pragmatic about information I take in. I sense how things are around me and apply them to the situation at hand. I'm sensing and perceiving concrete and pragmatic. Um, I do not need black and white information in order to make a decision. But by better understanding the more detailed results of my test, I was able to get a much wider understanding of myself and why I choose to do things the way I do. It helps people that are in a management position understand why do you prefer certain aspects of being a manager and why you don't prefer certain aspects of being a manager. And it might help you understand why you relate to certain people that you manage. Or if you're being managed by somebody, it helps you understand why you're maybe not getting along with your manager. So it helps you understand a little bit more deeply about yourself. Now, interpreting your Kiersey program, and I'm going to give you um, a link to understanding where you can get more information. Here's more things that I found out about myself as an artisan with a sensing perceiving. I'm very open-minded. I'm always looking for solutions. I'm tolerant, persuasive, and impulsive. I pulled all that out of the book that you'll see down here. The book recommendation is Please Understand Me Too by David Kiersey. It's an older book, but there's a ton of information in there to better understand yourself. For example, if you've ever gotten your horoscope and you go to those horoscope pages and it tells you all this detailed stuff about who you are and why you're that way, this book is kind of like that, but it's based on, um, the, again, Jung principles, which are basic psychological principles. Um, it helped me understand better why I'm inspired to be a coach. Um, and as a coach, it's important that I inspire but also need to help my clients learn to lead themselves. I found out that I'm always looking for solutions for people. I'm always trying to persuade people to use my solutions and that I'm probably in a pretty good role for a career for myself. Um, so for, again, those people who want to go really deep into their personality and better understand themselves, this is a great assessment. I would not recommend this assessment to be used on your staff or those people you're trying to manage. It's not a quick assessment, and um, it's probably not useful in a, a fast solution-based environment. Next, I want to go over the MBTI or Myers-Briggs type indicator. Many of you may have already taken this through your organization. If you haven't, I have a quick link down at the bottom, which you can go and, again, it's not going to be as if you went and bought the actual test itself. There are definitely links I could send to anybody who's interested that you can buy a full-blown Myers-Briggs test and you can take it. But I want you to remember that this is um, a self-assessment test. So whether you buy a big package one or you do the short one online, how you want to get the results may influence what results you get. But if you go in with an open mind and you take this short link free test, you can get a pretty good idea of where you land within the 16 types. So for example, it's the most widely used assessment tool in business today. It contains 16 different personality types. It's easily taken and easily understood. Um, I'd also like to offer um, any of the attendees that, that take the test today, um, if you want to send me the results, I'm going to have my contact information up here in a little bit. I have a lot of resources for Myers-Briggs. Um, I have booklets that I've used in my master's course. I have books that I've pulled information from. I can send you copies of things that are just based on the personality profile that you send back to me from this little online test. I'm happy to share it. 
again, it's going to give you a higher level view of yourself, unlike the QRC. The QRC is going to be really in-depth. This is just a really simple tool for you to go, oh, hey, that's, that's a little bit more of, of who I am. Uh, I want to also show you that my MBTI type came out as an ESMJ. I'm going to show you here in a second the 16 personality types. Again, I want to use myself as an example for you so you can see how I used it to develop my own plan uh, on growing as a coach and becoming better at what I want to do and strengthening myself. So an ENFJ is an extroverted feeling with intuition. And again, if you take that online test and send me the results, a lot of the information I'm going to send you will help answer what your score means. So for example, I have pages on an ENFJ. That person has strong ideals, they enjoy leading and facilitating, encourage cooperation, a cheerleader, and participating actively in managing others. I pulled that right off the sheets of information that came from my master's course. So that's me as a coach. That's me on, on paper. And I was, of course, going, all right, yeah, I see that. But um, I knew that my natural tendencies were very much being enthusiastic and supportive. I love to see others succeed. That's why I'm a coach. I was just not aware of how much of these traits I had, and I'm even more aware now of how much these tendencies are can, what can get me behind in my work, um, stop me from being productive enough, and I need to be to manage and be aware and make a plan. Um, later on, you'll see how I work these into that development plan for myself. Okay? And next, I want to show you the actual MBTI 16, so you're aware of what to look for when you're taking these tests. Um, inside the colored boxes are brief descriptions. It's a little fuzzy. I apologize. I can send a clearer copy to anybody that wants one. Um, but take, for example, my score, which is at the bottom second one. It's the ENFJ, smooth talking persuader. I was a little embarrassed by that, but sometimes we have to own who we are, and that's okay. Um, you know, I, just last week I was helping a gentleman who has a team of 10 people. We did his test on this, and he, became, he came back as an ENTJ which is on the far bottom right, life's natural leader. And I got to tell you, he really is that person. Um, when we discussed what about his personality makes him a natural leader for his company, he realized he's been this go-getter and always gets excited about challenges. We then discussed several of his team members, and I pointed out that they did not enjoy change nearly as much as he did. Um, he didn't understand why they couldn't be enthusiastic like he was. And we started to open up a conversation about the different roles in the company and the different roles on his team. And not everyone enjoys sitting in front of a computer working on accounting and data entry, yet some people did. Um, he came to realize that uh, these were not shortcomings in his people, just differences. And going forward, we're now working on a development plan for each of his key people and helping him coach them. And we may have saved some people their jobs, and we've also helped him be less frustrated understanding that his natural leading tendencies aren't shared by everybody on his team. So it was really exciting for him to see on this grid where he sits. And some of you will see when you get your MBTI score back. Um, I, for example, am an ENFJ. You know, if I scored my test a little bit differently, I might pop up to an ENFP or I might pop over to an ESFJ or, or any of those things around that quadrant. It's nice to see what I can easily change my personality to be as people need me to change. Um, those are easy transitions for me. So if, if a lot of this information is kind of confusing, please take notes, write down questions. You're going to have time to ask those um, at the end of my presentation and or shoot me emails for your certain scenarios and um, I can answer those as we go. I, I love assessment testing and how much it can help you be more successful. So next, we're going to go into strengths finders. And again, this is probably um, one of the, the, the big, widely accepted professional books that was out a couple years ago. It's a 40-year study of human strengths that's been boiled down to 34, um, based uh, on the highlighting the strengths for growth instead of weaknesses. That's one of the things people really like about it, is we're not pointing out, hey, you're not really strong here. Instead, it's your five major strengths. And then you use what you have instead of building what you don't. Um, it's very useful for a salesperson in understanding what they are best at when working with others. This is a test that does not try to build up those weaknesses. It's what you're naturally good at. Um, I do have a couple of things I, I don't necessarily 
like about Strength Finders, um, criticisms I have is that it is extremely, um, extremely focused only on strengths. And if we sometimes ignore our weaknesses, we, I think, aren't developing our whole selves professionally. So it's a great place to start, but I think that we, we need to um, sometimes also focus on, on weaknesses. So if you're going to go about Strengths Finder, I strongly recommend that you um, also focus on, on finding ways to build up on, on your weaknesses as well. In a moment here, I'm going to give you a link to Amazon that will show you where to order the book for Strengths Finder. Next, I want to show you, again, because I'm using myself as an example. Um, let's put it all out there. Here are my strengths. You'll also see that they're, um, they're a little bit – you're not going to understand what these strengths are unless you're reading the book. But I think you, we all know what wooing is. If we're trying to woo somebody that we, we like and we want them to fall in love with us. And that happens to be one of my top results. If you go back to what my Kiersey results were and my uh, Myers-Briggs, um, I'm a persuader. Uh, communication is a strength. I obviously love to talk to people. Harmony, I want people to find solutions. Positivity is that cheerleader again. Arranger, I like to arrange solutions. So you'll see my Strength Finders test results came up and they kind of align with my other results. This is a simple book for you to get. Um, let me go right to the next screen and right there is a link on Amazon where you can order the book. If you'll see, if you go to Amazon and you type in Strength Finder and you type in Tom Ross, Wrath, sorry, you'll go right to the Strength Finder page to order this book. Again, inside of it is a code that you're going to use, and you will enter that code on the Strength Finder's website. You take their test, and they send you a full report. It's, it's a lot of fun, and it's one of the assessment tests that I think is easily used in a business environment. Okay? Um, right here is the information. Take the test on the website very detailed plan, and this is a really great part of your development plan, which we're going to go over in a little bit. Okay? The next test, the fourth test we're going to go over, oops, sorry, is DISC testing. This is one of my personal favorites, um, and it's probably because of my personality profile in DISC. Um, it's a widely accepted form of testing. It's a very old form of testing. You can buy tests online. We here at Maximum Acceleration offer testing to our clients to use on their employees. I believe the charge is $35 a test. And the report you get back is based on how your personality measures, measures against the general population. What I find interesting is most of these tests go back to 16 primary um, personality styles. Just like the Kiersey testing has 16 um, under artisan, there's four under all the others, there's four. Myers-Briggs has 16, DISC has 16 profiles. I found that interesting. Very basic tool. Once you understand how to use it to identify your personality, it's really easy to go further into the report that you're going to get and figure out how to identify the personality of your coworkers, your referral partners, your employees. Once you understand that, hey, I'm a very strong leader, but my processing team, they're not leaders. They're much more detail-oriented. I need to communicate with them differently. Or my realtor, for those on the call in, in the mortgage business, my realtors are very chatty, but I'm very goal-oriented. I want to get to the point. Well, you learn that you have to listen a little bit sometimes, and you have to be more relational with certain people and more to the point and matter of fact with others. It really helps you, I think, instantly learn how to communicate better with everybody. Next, I'm going to show you um, the different four letters that stand for the DISC test. Um, a lot of people have done DISC testing. When I come across somebody that I'm coaching and they want to use DISC for their team, it's really easy to understand these four letters. Dominance, influence, steadiness, consciousness, conscientiousness, sorry. That's what the DISC stands for. If we go into each letter, I'm going to do this really quickly. So you guys take notes because I don't want to drag anybody down who's already gone through this. If you want to know more about these letters, feel free to get a hold of me. All the coaches at Maximum Acceleration understand DISC, um, and we're all capable of helping you understand any of these assessment tools. Dominance, the letter D. Um, if you meet somebody who's very dominant, they're very results-oriented. They fear losing control. They don't like being controlled by others. They're quick decision makers. If you are not that person but you run across some of them, offering them results 
black and white, quick answers, <laughs> options, um, they're going to be understanding you better and it's going to build a better relationship. The I is for influence. Their major goals are people involvement. Um, they recognize um, recognition is a major thing for them. They want you to say, hey, good job. You're awesome. They love all that stuff. They love cheerleaders. Uh, they fear rejection. Um, they dislike handling complex ideas. Under pressure, they're emotional and disorganized. Um, they make decisions emotionally and on gut feelings. Um, now, people who are a letter S are steadiness. Um, I actually, Tim Brahim, back when we were working with Lloyd Toolbox, used to call these people with high S's doormats. <laughs> and um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call them do doormats. They feel like they really want to help the world. These are your very considerate people. They're charitable. If you have a team and you have somebody who's helping your team, these people are not going to try and take over your business. They're there to make sure everybody on the team does really well. You'll find a lot of your processors, a lot of people in operations have high S's. That's for steadiness. Um, as a client, they need assurance of stability. They need personal attention. They're very deliberate about making decisions. If you think you have somebody who's a really high S, you need to soothe them and make them feel comfortable. The last one is a C. Conscientiousness is what they call this, but I like to call it a very detailed, organized person. Somebody with a really high C is all about accuracy, order. They like control over information. They don't ever like to look like they're giving bad information. Um, they do fear criticism, and it can really knock them for a loop if they get criticized. Uh, they will withdraw under pressure. If you have a client that's like that, you need to really slow things down, provide them lots of information, give them time to feel comfortable. If you um, have staff that's like that, you have to create a safe environment to communicate with them. And when you're holding them to standards, you need to make sure that they understand the importance of those and uh, that that's their job. Um, these can be some of the tougher people to work with, but, but a lot of fun. Once they're on, your, on board with you, they're some of the most loyal people to work with. Okay, so I know I covered that a little bit faster, but I want to make sure that I don't bore a lot of you. Okay. You can order, again, a disk test from us. I have order forms. Everybody at a Maximum Acceleration does. Eric can handle that. Um, you use your disk report to help directly build your development plan, like all the assessment tests that I told you about. Um, it helps you hire the right person. It can help delegate correctly on your team. I have a lot of my clients who use DISC in order to get the right person employed. When we're in the hiring process, we try to find the right staff to fit the job description. Um, it helps you read your clients from referral partners, and it can help you learn how to smooth over tough situations and deal with conflict management. I'm going to show you a copy of what a DISC profile looks like. This is a graph sample. And I'm only showing this to you so that if you do the DISC, you can see um, this is an example of probably for those of you, again, in the mortgage business that are um, in, you know, it have staff that you're managing. This is probably a typical successful processor. This is somebody who has a really high C, that's that detail, a pretty high S, so they're a team player, a really low I, so they're not super chatty. They're not somebody who's going to have to ask you, what did you have for lunch? What did you do this weekend? Um, and they have a D, which means they have enough push that they're going to get stuff done, they can handle timelines. This is a great um, profile for you to look at for your processing operations team. Somebody who is maybe a really good salesperson is going to be a really high D, and sometimes they have really high I, but their S and C is going to be lower because they're, they're not stuck in the detail portion of business. Okay, and again, if anybody has questions about their particular um, profile, if they've done this before, they want to know, you know, how can they improve certain things, um, I'm happy to help them, as are any and all of the coaches at Maximum Acceleration. We love our assessment test, and I love DISC. So let's go to our next one. Here we want to talk about what was offered for this, this webinar, and that's creating a development plan. What is a development plan? Um, it's a document that takes into consideration your strengths and the areas of opportunity and very specific ways to focus on improving them. First, you're going to want to take um, the assessment test or test that you feel best suits your needs. 
If you have any results from any of the tools we've discussed, then get them out and use those. Um, next, you'll use those results to find where your strengths are in, in the report and where your opportunities are, uh, for, um, for we uh, weaknesses or opportunities to grow. Write them down on a paper, two sections, strengths on one side, opportunities on the other. And lastly, we're going to make some specific action steps with timelines attached to them. Timelines are critical so that we can work on both lists. Break these down into easily worked on action items that you hold yourself accountable to and um, accomplishing them in near date. You also need to probably, once you've gotten all your action items written down, find an accountability partner. That's somebody in your office, somebody in your networking group. It could be somebody you find online. Maybe you go to a conference and you meet somebody at a table you're sitting at that you really like. Find somebody to help share those action items with and those action steps. I mean, that's the number one reason why people hire coaches. We hold you accountable to a timeline. We hold you accountable to action steps, and you develop. And I, I can't tell you how important it is. I'm going to give you a real quick snapshot at my development plan. This is a development plan that's not based on my professional life, but this was built for my master's program. And if you'll see, I had to work on my strengths. I have strong ideals. So I have to write out a mission statement that highlights what my ideals are for me and my coaching students, and I have to include specifics for the students to be able to follow and implement. And I have a date here for myself to finish these. I'm being held accountable by one of my instructors um, that's mentoring me in my master's program. I also found my areas of weakness. I need to schedule a weekly time to review the growth opportunity list, which is my development plan. And I have to stay aware of my need to change in those areas. And I do that every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Other limitations, I need to develop a series of assessments that will be given to my direct reports in order to better understand their ability. I need to better manage conflict. So you'll see, I mean, this isn't meant for you guys to copy, but it's so that you get a peek inside how I'm holding myself accountable in my personal development plan. Okay, next we have actions for today. You've got to understand that assessments are powerful tools. And if you're going to choose to use them, follow through. Take the assessments. Look at the results. Create a development plan based on those. You will see change in your life. If you're going to use it on your staff, engage them in the process. People will love it. You're helping develop them. You're helping them understand themselves. They're going to walk away from this relationship with the assessments, knowing themselves better and having grown. A development plan is necessary in order to act on the results. You know, I'm a, a low detail person. So my action plan is going to be bullet points, do this, 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 this. Some of you are going to want to write out things that are much more involved. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're working on your own development plan. What you learn about yourself will help you in every aspect of your life. I promise you that. Um, choose even one assessment. If you're on the call today, go buy the Strength Finders book. Or, you know, go take the Myers-Briggs test from the link that I showed you. Partner with someone to make sure you work on those action items. I want to point out really quick that there was a 1993 Brigham Young University, oops, sorry, <laughs> research that was done that talks about how people are able to affect change. If you want, I can send you a copy of this because if you're trying to change your staff, if you're managing others and they're not engaging in this process, it's really important that they understand the psychology of change. If you tell somebody you're going to do it, 10% chance. All the way down to if you set a specific future time to share progress with another person and make, that you're committed to, you have a 95% chance of making that change. So create your development plan and partner with somebody. Share this information with your staff. Otherwise, they're not going to buy into the change. Okay? And lastly, right. I want to so, let Stephanie, you, let's well, do one last Stephanie, I'm going to interrupt you for just a second before we get to that last little piece. Um, why don't we go ahead and open up here for a couple of minutes of questions, if that's all right. Guys, if you want to yeah. get any specific questions or guidance answered um, with, with Stephanie's help and support here, um, you, I've noticed there's been some great conversation going on in the chat uh, box. If you are not able to see the chat window in your uh, presentation, by the way, there's a, if you mouse up to the top of your computer screen, you'll see a, a bar that's on auto-hide. If you hit the little button that looks like a picture of a mountain with an X across it, 
uh, you can go ahead and uh, minimize that uh, auto hide bar and you'll be able to put ch uh, comments into the chat box directly. Uh, again, just with the number of callers we have on the line today, it's going to not be practical to open up the line for uh, live conversation. But if you do want to get some questions answered, go ahead and pop them into the chat uh, at this moment and we'll go ahead and take some live questions via the chat window here. Uh, keep in mind if you're embarrassed and don't want people to see your comments or questions, you're welcome to put those questions into the chat window, uh, into the private chat option as well. All right. Well, they are uh, logging into the question. There was just one other quick thing that I was going to share. Um, one of the questions that was asked via the chat uh, is, you know, should you repeat these uh, assessments or profiles uh, over time? And the answer is yes. Keep in mind that all of these models are behavioral profiles, and behavior can be modified with effort and with, um, uh, with guidance. And so whether you say, you know, if, if there's this particular weakness that Stephanie mentioned a few minutes ago, that is definitely an area that you can focus on and create some uh, improvement. And it is advantageous to recheck your assessments over time particularly stuff like the, the Myers-Briggs and the DISC profiles because they can be modified over time to better suit your life, your situation, your role, uh, and, and functions like that. All right. Okay. Um, it looks like Brad has asked the question, Stephanie, for someone starting out, what is step one to get yourself more organized? Yeah, I was asking for clarity based on assessments or just plain organized. I think, you know, I'll go back to the idea of a development plan. Um, just to get going, flat out get going. I think that you, uh, if you're just starting out, you need to find out what you need to know. Um, the development plan can be used for assessment, and it can be used for anything that you need to get started on. So if you're just starting out, and I'm going to assume in the mortgage business, do you need to know more about programs? Do you need to know more about structuring loans? Do you need to know more about the processing and what goes into the loan as it goes through the process? Do you need to um, build better referral relationships? Do you need a database? Do you need time management? You pick what areas you feel you need to develop. You create action items. If it's better time management, then you block out the first hour of every day to work on your business because as a new person, you're going to probably be very overwhelmed with all the information coming at you, and the process itself can be overwhelming. So you may actually want to um, set up a time each morning for learning, for writing emails to people, for calling on contacts, so that the rest of your day, if it kind of goes a little crazy, you're okay with that. If it's, you need to learn more about the programs and products that your company offers, then you need to go to the um, different organizations that are the different lenders that are providing you and read their sheets. Find a mentor in your organization that will help you better understand how to structure the loans. Meet with the processor and have them walk you through what the steps are that they're doing. Create a loan process. I actually have a 71-step loan process that I send my people so they can see all the steps they can do, and then we cut it down to about 12 to 18 steps for them individually. Um, I guess getting more organized isn't easy for anybody, especially how busy the business is now, but I highly recommend a databasing tool of some kind. I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, Stephanie. Um, all right, a couple more questions we've got time for here. Um, like I said, go ahead and pop them into the either the public or the private chat. Um, but one of the questions a little while back in the chat talked about you know better use of DISC when it comes to hiring strategies. Um, you know, one of the things that you can use, you know, any of these assessments really, uh, if you get good at understanding what they are and what they can do and how to be able to read people, um, DISC is a very powerful one that we use quite a bit in our coaching because not only can it be used from a personal growth and development plan uh, approach, it can also be used in, in when it comes into recruiting and hiring for the right position, as Stephanie mentioned, you know, like the perfectionist profile particularly a perfectionist with a higher than average D, um, can be a great processor, somebody who can really stay on task and push those deals through but has a very high level 
of ability to recognize important details and catch the things that the, the typical high DI loan officer might potentially miss. The other thing that you can use something like this profile for is the um, the uh, interactions in your day-to-day -day sales conversations. Uh, as Stephanie mentioned a little bit more in detail about how you know if you're sitting across the desk with somebody who's a high D, it's it's it, you know it's kind of like the, uh, the it just the facts man guy. You know it, it's just the short, the simple, the quick. What do I need to get this deal done? How do we make the next step happen? That's what the high D looks for. The high I, you're going to want to spend more time with rapport building and, and really creating that personal connection and, and letting them know that you appreciate their time and that you like hanging out with them and develop that rapport. With the high S, it's that more supportive leadership that they need. They, they may seem uncommitted or, or um, just easily distracted, so you may want to uh, spend a little more time working with them to make sure that, that you've informed them and educate them, but that you're leading them confidently forward because they tend to be more of a follower than a leader. With the high C, it's all about the details. You've got to make sure that you give them time to understand and ask a lot of questions about the details of what's going on in the loan transaction, whatever it is you're trying to promote to them. Um, and let them ask plenty of questions, make sure that you give them a high confidence in the details, but at some point to then clarify that they're ready to move forward. And, and they tend to be a little bit slower to work with in the sales process because of that. Um, other thoughts or comments or questions here that uh, we want to try and, and get answered. It looks like, Stephanie, you've been hitting the chat box pretty well here. Um, all right. I think we've got time for maybe one more question in here if you guys want to go ahead and pop in. One last question. We'll see if we can uh, grab a few minutes to talk to answer that question for you. Yeah, I just posted on the uh, chat box the uh, link to the Young Myers Briggs test. If you do log on to that website to take the free test, it's a really simple test. You um, are, there's a couple that you choose on there. You would want to pick the one. I believe it's on the right, and it's the Young J U N G test. So you would click on that and take that one. And I, I did offer before, um, if anybody wants to get information based on their results, feel free to get a hold of me. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, there was one last question in here that I want to try and hit on really quickly. Uh, Jeff, yes, we do have six coaches on team uh, currently, and, and all of us have strengths in different areas. Um, all of us have different personality profiles. There is a little bit of a scientific process involved with selecting the coach, but ultimately the best place to get started is go to our website, look at the bias of all the coaching team members, and look at who you feel would be the best fit for you, uh, and then from there we can coordinate to, to make sure. And, and, and any of us as coaches, if we, you know, if we do a, an initial strategy session with you and introduce you to the flow and feel of coaching, um, part of our process is, is if we recognize anything that's not a great fit between the person we're talking with and the client and us as a coach, we'll hand it off to the coach who we feel is going to be most appropriate for you and most able to help you with what you're trying to accomplish in the growth of your business. Um, all right. Um, Okay, well, guys, uh, as, as we get close to the end of this program, Stephanie has just a couple of other quick things that she wants to share with you, uh, and then I want to just give you some quick news. Hang with us for just a second as we'll be talking a little bit about some of the upcoming events in, in our family of companies and what's available and offered to you and how you can find out more about how Maximum Acceleration can help you grow. Uh, but for now, um, Stephanie, why don't you tell them about what you've agreed to do uh, for, for attendees of the call today? Okay. Well, you know, I think you guys have all seen my test results, so it's pretty pretty um, apparent that I love what I do. So I would love to help anybody who's on the call. Uh, if you get free assessment evaluation, I'll help you develop your own uh, development plan, and um, we'll get something set up for you based on whether it's for your team, it's for yourself, or if you have to hire someone. I've just helped, I think, probably with seven new hires in the last three months, and we've done it all through assessments and through my clients understanding themselves better and what they needed to fit into their, into their team. Keep in mind, when you're trying to hire somebody, we frequently hire somebody just like ourselves, and you probably need to hire somebody who's filling a different role in your team. So um, feel free to get a hold of me. There's the test link is right there. My contact information is there, email info at maxlcoach.com, and 
um, I'd be happy to help you with that. So um, thanks for listening. Awesome, guys. Well, just a couple of quick things that I wanted to share with you all. Um, one final offer that that we'll make available to you. Stephanie talked a little bit about the uh, the um, strategy session. One of the best ways we've found over time for people to be able to understand the value of coaching is to actually experience it. It's a very dynamic process, and there's a number of tools and resources and, and techniques we use as a coach to try and shorten the learning curve to increase long-term development performance and make sure that you get from where you are to where you want to go faster. So one of the best ways for you guys to be able to find out the potential value of coaching is to go ahead and experience it. And what we'd like to offer any of you is what we call a no-cost, no-obligation strategy session um, as, a, as an opportunity off the call today. Um, there will be a web link that will pop up as soon as you are done or in the exit today's program. All you need to do is fill out that brief information uh, piece. It just basically gives us an indication of when would be a good time to potentially schedule one of those. Our, uh, our follow-up team and customer service department will call you and arrange for a session. Uh, if you, particularly if you like what Stephanie has talked about today or if you'd like some more hands-on guidance with completing the Myers-Briggs assessment or this profile and being able to get some feedback directly from Stephanie on this uh, information, you can certainly send those results to Stephanie or go to our website, www.mxlcoach.com slash strategy, and we'll be able to get you uh, scheduled for one of those um, strategy sessions and we can go from there. Uh, all right, the last thing I did want to share with you just before we close out today's program uh, is I wanted to tell you about one of the upcoming events. The next uh, event in our webinar series is going to be coming up next uh, Tuesday, October 23rd, same time, same channel, same station. Uh, is it, We're featuring uh, Todd Ballinger. If you are not familiar with Todd Ballinger, he's the president of uh, Sales Solutions at Mortgage Success Source. Just recently joined the faculty leadership at Mortgage Success Source. Prior to that, he is the founder uh, and, and CEO of Kendall Todd Companies, also the author of several books, uh, one of the most popular and widely published being the Borrow Smart, Retire Rich series. And Todd is going to be joining me talking about the future of mortgage planning and the dynamics of how that's changed over the last five years with the financial crisis and, and all of the changes to the structure. So you'll definitely want to plug in for that program. Uh, of course, you can always go back to the website itself uh, and, and, and get more information about the rest of the series. Go back to the same website that you went to to register for today's program, and you'll be able to see um, all of the upcoming events. And, and we're going to be publishing. We just finished up the schedule for through the rest of the year and into the first part of January this week. So we've just finally confirmed some great speakers coming up in December. Um, we've got some programs on social media coming up. You'll be want to make sure you want to watch for that. Uh, Making Your Social Networking Work is the title of that program, uh, in addition to other things. Uh, and again, uh, if you do have any questions, um, we do have just a few minutes left to the hour here. If there is other stuff that you would like to get help, guidance, or support with, uh, we do have a few more minutes to address some specific questions um, as we've kind of wrapped up the program. Uh, of course, Stephanie, I, you know, I know you're busy and I know you've got a million things to do, but uh, are you going to be able to hang around for just a few more minutes and maybe take a couple of more questions here right as we kind of um, finish out today's session? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've got a client call that I'm, um, I already emailed and then let him know that I'm going to be a few moments late. Okay. Great. Well, I certainly appreciate you joining us today, and I certainly uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to share with you some valuable resources. And thank you again, Stephanie, for, for just a wealth of information you've shared today. And hopefully um, you guys will take Stephanie's advice and create an action plan, pick something, and do something with it um, that, uh, that will help you grow your business and take your business to the next level. Let's see, I'm going to scroll through the chat and see if there's anything else that we um, can address here. Any final comments or advice, Stephanie, that you have to share with the group um, as I'm just kind of scrolling through the chat and seeing if there's any questions we've missed? Um, you know, if they're on this call, they're on the call for assessment. So in, in response, 
In regards to assessment tools, if you find you're having problems, you're, you're struggling with your team, and you're trying to figure out why, um, assessments can really be a great way for you to see if it's you or if it may be them or they're in the wrong you know, categories. I think whether you need help in your business or not, any one of the tools that I showed you today can help you better understand yourself. I, I find that when I work with my clients and we do assessments, they work better with their team, they work better with their partners, they work better, their, their personal lives get more balanced as well because they're starting to understand how they relate to the world. So I strongly recommend to everybody I meet, and I'm probably annoying, that you should get some kind of assessment tool in your life so that you, you just know yourself better. It helps. And for those who don't want to know themselves better, get to know other people better because you'll be more successful. <laughs> Definitely. It's, you know, it's amazing what you can learn from uh, tools like this. It's amazing. And I don't know how many times, Stephanie, you hear clients comment when we do the disk profile, for example, just how it's like, it's like the thing opens us up and reads us like a book. Um, and, and then also gives some very insightful guidance as to what that information, uh, you know, to, to, to improve our lives and to make things better. All right. Uh, let's see. A couple of key questions. There was a couple of key questions that popped in here that I wanted to try and make sure we addressed. And I'm just trying to scroll through them. Where this thing just keeps hopping back and forward. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the questions that did come up is maximum acceleration a part of mortgage success source. Um, the simplest answer is no. Uh, we, however, in the first four years, we were funded and launched by Loan Toolbox. We were one of Tim's pet projects uh, in developing, and the, and the main reason our system was created because you know one of Tim's biggest frustrations was, you know, people would sign up for Loan Toolbox, they they'd look at it once or twice in the first year, and then never touch it again. And there was such a wealth of knowledge and information in that resource, but people weren't taking advantage of it, and they weren't using it to improve themselves and their lives. So we uh, launched into a massive research project back in 2004, um, ran all the way through uh, a little over 1,000 man hours and, and well over um, a couple million dollars in research and development, really trying to unplug and fix what the implementation problem was. And that's where the system um, uh, came from. Uh, we, in 2008, separated from Mortgage Success Source Loan Toolbox officially and now operated as an independent company. Uh, but we do still have a great relationship with Mortgage Success Source. In fact, their product is resold as a part of our coaching system um, because our, our actual back-end technology and support systems are part of the um, uh, the process we use to help clients achieve their goals faster. All right, guys. Well, um, I guess we'll go ahead and close up a little bit early. If you do want one of those strategy sessions, just remember to take a few seconds uh, and either pop something into the chat screen here, um, and we'll get you some of that information. Um, or if you want to go ahead and, and, and just fill out a couple of quick uh, questions that are on the website, um, that, that will pop up as soon as you exit today's program. Otherwise, I want to thank you all again for attending, and thank you again, Stephanie, for the wonderful information you've shared with everybody today. Uh, and other than that, take this information, do something with it. Use it this week if you can. Try and figure out um, you know, the best way to take this information and plug it into what you do on a daily basis so you can improve your results, improve your performance, make things happen better and faster for you.